Up until this week, the functions for dealing with strings in GameMaker really haven't changed a lot for many years now, really since the beginning of uh, when uh, Gmail became a part of GameMaker. But beginning with the beta version of GameMaker 2022.1100.0.248, or what is going to be the 2022.11, or the November 2022 um, stable update to GameMaker, we now have a whole host of brand new string-related functions at our disposal. And some of these are uh, entirely new functions, some of them are new behaviors that have been added to old functions, and I'm going to talk about a, uh, probably most of the string-related changes in, um, in due time. But what I'm interested in today is uh, this very first one. And this is also reflected in some of the other um, functions down here. So let's get into this. So um, since the dawn of time, I, I once had a teacher who likes to uh, begin every, every school year reading the syllabus with that statement. And I do feel that that is a tradition worth keeping in uh, some situations. Since the dawn of time, if you wanted to do something like, um, let's say you had a character and they had uh, 10 hit points. And let's say you wanted to show a message to the user um, informing, the, uh, informing the user how, much, how many hit points their character has. You would have to do something like you have uh, plus end the string uh, plus uh, the string function HP um, and then create a uh, concatenate another string uh, and we can say hit points and something like this. And the, uh, the string function is for explicitly turning a number into a string. And if you ran this, you would see a message box uh, informing you that you have 10 hit points. Um, if you did not go away game window, if you did not include the, uh, the string function, uh, you would actually see an error because you're trying to concatenate uh, disparate types. GameMaker doesn't like that. Other programming languages are just perfectly fine with this. GameMaker is a bit of a, uh, an odd one out in that sense. Anyway, uh, the point is you would have to uh, concatenate a couple different strings together. Admittedly, it's kind of annoying at first. After a while, you sort of start to get used to it. Uh, maybe if you had another attribute, um, that you wanted to display to the user. The, uh, the amount of string concatenation would start to become a little bit much. Uh, so this would tell the user that they have five hit points and, um, 10 hit points rather and five magic points. And that's there, I guess you can, you can use that in your games. And some people, uh, particular, particularly people who come from a background of languages where there is um, various built-in string formatting capabilities, um, might instead prefer to uh, write some code that would allow them to write something like uh, you have, uh, let's say, in curly braces, zero hit points, and uh, in curly braces, one magic points. And then uh, from here, they would uh, they would pass it into a function of some sort, which would automatically insert um, the values of HP and MP into the uh, curly braces zero and curly braces one. And this goes by a couple different names. Uh, you might see it called string formatting. You might see it called string interpolation. You might call you might see it's called string templating. Um, I believe GameMaker has chosen to call it um, string formatting, but Generally speaking, all three of those things refer to the same thing. And in the past, until this week, you would have had to write your own function that will automatically uh, search for things like uh, symbols like this and this in a string and replace it with the um, given values. But now, uh, that is actually a optional behavior that is built into the string function. So the, um, the functionality of the string function has been expanded and it can now automatically insert the, uh, the values into the uh, formatted string, into the template string like this. And now if I run the game, we can see that we're going to see very much the same thing, uh, except the way that we write this is a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more concise, and we don't have to do all this nonsense with uh, remembering to cast each individual value to a string before concatenating it and uh, making sure all the spaces are in the correct places and that sort of, that sort of nonsense. And this is something that can be useful in all sorts of situations in games. Maybe if you have the player talking to an NPC, they might want to say something like, uh, hello, 
my name is blank and I, I don't know, and my favorite food is blank. And then you could insert whatever values you want here. Um, I don't know, maybe my name is uh, Chirgurath and my favorite food is Pumpernickel or something like that. And uh, Feather is complaining because the return value of this function is never used. And you know what? That's okay. Because now it is. So that's the sort of thing you can use this for. Um, I'm going to actually go on for a little bit longer with um, describing some of the other behaviors of this new string formatting capability. Um, if you have, oh, I don't know, let's say that uh, you have a string format uh, template, whatever, which takes um, two like values, which is supposed to take two values here. And let's say that you only pass in, um, you only pass in one. Uh, the game won't crash or anything. It won't like complain about the string format being like not used correctly or anything, but it will simply ignore any missing values. And you can see that, hello, my name is Shea Gorath and my favorite food is like blank one. If a user sees that, they'll probably think that something's gone wrong. Now, the string function is now a variadic function. It'll take as many arguments as you can throw at it. And you can see that down at the bottom in the, uh, the code help, um, or I guess I can just, now that uh, feather is a thing, I can just mouse over the function and you can see the, uh, the definition. You can give it as many arguments as you want for purposes related to the uh, string formatting, and it'll just, uh, it'll just do it. It'll do its best with what it gets. But if for whatever reason you want to pass in an array of values instead of a, um, individual values. So if you make the arguments to the, uh, the string formatter, a, uh, an array of values. Uh, GameMaker won't exactly do this correctly. It will attempt to stringify the array and it will insert that into blank zero. And that's not quite correct, uh, but there is an extended version of the string function. Uh, and I, I do realize that it's at least a little bit like humorous that something as simple as the string function is now getting an extended version of itself, but that's the way that your games appears to uh, like to uh, name the fancier version of simple functions like this. Uh, if you say string underscore extended, uh, you actually can pass the, uh, the string template arguments as an array. And when I run this now, uh, we are going to see that it has been formatted correctly with the values in the array being inserted into the string. And you may or may not find this preferable. I personally just would use a variadic function when given the opportunity. I don't really see the point of a uh, going out of my way to use an extended version of a, um, of a string function like this. I suppose if you're doing something like trying to build a string on the fly um, and you don't know ahead of time how many of these uh, like template blanks you're gonna end up with and you need to pass in values as an array, then maybe in that case, it might, be, uh, it might make sense to use the string extended function, but um, I don't think that's something that is going to really arise very often. And uh, lastly, there is one more at least one more that I saw. Are there any others by any chance that I missed? It does not look like it. Uh, the show debug message has also received the, tr the, same, the same treatment uh, as the regular string function has. I have been using the boring old show message function, which will just show a pop-up message on the screen uh, for this demonstration because really the only reason I'm doing that is because it's easier to see um, when I'm doing these demos than it would be if I had to go looking for stuff that showed up in the console. Um, show message is not something that you really want to usually use in an actual game, aside from debugging, but if you were to instead show a debug message, and if you were, look, if you were to look at the, uh, the function arguments uh, for the show debug message function, you can see that uh, it's gotten the same treatment. So we can pass a, a, a string template, a, a format string, as the first argument, and then we can give it whatever arguments we would like to be in, um, automatically inserted into it like this. And this is going to plain and simple cause the formatted text to show up uh, down here in the console. Perfect. And the show debug message function has also received the same extended treatment as the, um, as the string function has. I'm not going to demonstrate that. I think you will get the point by now. Um, a lot of people in the past 
have written their own logging functions that would do basically this for the purpose of uh, printing things to the console for debugging purposes. I suppose maybe if you've already done that, there's no point in like changing all your code to just use the original show debug message function instead, uh, just in case um, the version that you implemented has any uh, differing behaviors and you don't want to change it and you don't want to have to spend a couple hours debugging like logging functions like this when you could be making your game. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it in this case. I think would be the appropriate answer. But if you've ever been in need of writing a logging function like this, um, of writing a somewhat neater and tidier version of show the bug message, um, you no longer have to do that because there's now one built into Game Maker. And as a bit of a fun fact, uh, on my list of, on my very long list of videos that I wanted to make for Game Maker, I actually had an item that uh, was similar to this in writing logging functions. And as it turns out, by not making that video, I basically procrastinated my way into not having to do it at all because it's now just part of Game Maker. So, uh, yeah, procrastination pays off. I don't know if that's the lesson that we're supposed to be learning from this. So, uh, there's a couple other string related functions that have been added. Uh, string trim start, uh, string trim end, string trim. If you've ever used a language like Python or JavaScript, you know exactly what this does. If you haven't, it's not hard to guess what these do and the description sums it up pretty nicely and I don't think I really have to spend a lot of time explaining them. If there's any spaces or new lines or um, like blank tabs or anything like that at the beginning or end of a string, uh, the trim functions will remove them. Uh, string starts with, string ends with, I think needs no further explanation than the, uh, the name of the functions themselves. There are several functions related to splitting strings and those I am actually going to make uh, separate videos on because this can get a little bit more involved as well as string join, which is basically the opposite of splitting a string. And uh, lastly, string for each, which if you're familiar with the for each loop uh, that was recently added to arrays in GameMaker, uh, string for each is exactly the same thing, but it will instead iterate over every character in a string instead of every uh, index in an array. And personally, I actually don't think that's very useful at all when it comes to strings, uh, because how often do you need to do that? But I suppose if you, uh, if you, if you do need to do something like that, it is uh, faster to have GameMaker do that than to uh, iterate over it yourself because um, iterating, iterating over every character in a string can be surprisingly slow uh, thanks to the way that uh, Unicode strings are um, stored internally. So I'm going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, uh, one tutorial tutorial and one let's make a game. Uh, the November 2022 update to Game Maker is sort of throwing a wrench in that because um, I've been hit with so many like new and possibly interesting additions to GML in the last few weeks, which I feel compelled to just rant about on the internet. But that's the idea anyway. If any of that sounds appealing to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, uh, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Guidry, Jonathan Bernardez, Kiexi, Cinder Larson, Square Crowd, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.